I certainly don't believe that it would be business as usual. Uh, I think it's important when we're analysing the FSA announcement, which which came about by them writing to local authorities on the 12th of February and hit the newspapers on the 13th, that we go back a few months. So considering the fact that we had a thriving industry, and by all accounts in the UK that ranged from somewhere around £100 million and to £300 million, at the point that the European Commission reclassified CBD products as novel in January of last year. So we had, a, we had a novel situation in that we weren't dealing with chia seeds coming to the market. We had an established market. That led to a number of problems, and I have sympathy with the regulators, as I do with the industry. But if we cast our mind back to the summer of 2019, the Food Standards Agency, and we have a multi-agency approach in the UK, so the Food Standards Agency began to hold meetings with the Home Office, with the Med Medicines Health Regulatory Authority, who deal with the medical claims around products, with trading standards who are the frontline um, enforcers, if you like, and also with, at that stage, um, all of the interested parties. And they highlighted a number of issues. Carrying through from that, the Food Standards Agency instructed the Committee on Toxicology, who are an independent collection of scientists, to look at the safety of uh, CBD. That report was produced and published in January of this year, but it went reasonably unnoticed for a number of weeks until it was discussed at the board meeting of the Food Standards Agency. Now, what the toxicology committee looked at was safety. They had limited data to examine, so they focused upon the data that was produced during the clinical trials for the de development of the GW drug, uh, Epidiolips. Now, having looked at that, they raised concerns in both the rodent and the clinical trials. And the way that the toxicology committee advise is they have two parameters so they have what they call the the lowest evidence of adverse effects and then they have a level where there are no adverse effects and in that report they identified that at the levels that GW were, were producing on the market for prescription there was a trade-off between risk adverse effects and the benefit in the medical sphere what the food standards agency had to do was to transfer that to a food supplement and three things came out of that meeting, and they were reaffirmed uh, at the start of this month in the board meeting and the report of the chief executive. And the three points were, firstly, that they would issue guidance on dosage. This was the first time that any health regulator in Europe did so. And they set the, the amount at 70 milligrams per day, contrary to the 230 that the industry had, had adopted previously as per the, the MI. HA's advice. So we had information about dosage at 70 milligrams for an average 70 kilogram adult. We had the issue of the presence of controlled cannabinoids and despite the myth of 0.2% that's been perpetuated by certain uh, elements in the industry that relates to industrial health conservation and the Home Office through their fact sheet on cannabinoids, CBD and other cannabinoids have reiterated and it's now in its fourth edition that there can be no controlled cannabinoids present in these products and the third was that they affirmed the decision for novel foods and then they set this date of the 31st of march for a validated and validate is, in, is important and I'm, I'm sure we'll come on to that to that later now the situation in regard to the question business as usual we only have to look at the FSAI, so the Irish, uh, European Irish Food Standards Agency, and we've seen that they've already taken steps to remove products from the shelves that tested positive for controlled cannabinoids. There is controversy around the methods that were used because we now have a situation where we have to accept that there is a contaminant level of THC through feeding livestock from industrial hemp. And we know from some of the um, European announcements about the recall of, uh, of certain products that we believe testing will be key there to to, to eliminate this non-detected that we that we keep seeing we need a standardization of, of, of testing so we know enforcement will take place with regard to controlled products we understand from the meeting in march that trading standards will operate as the limb for the regulators so they'll they are all about consumer protection so we will see enforcement, we believe, once we hopefully all return to normality and 
everybody's daily lives can return. We, I believe we will see product being removed from the shelf because it doesn't have the correct labelling, notwithstanding the fact of inferior products, but manufacturers should be placing on their label now the recommended daily doses. They should ensure that there are there is no THC in the product, which is a concern for those who are marketing and selling full spectrum products. And we have novel foods. Um, in that mix, you have Brexit and you have exit day and the coronavirus's necessarily effect on the withdrawal agreement and the European Union, the European Food Standards Agency, as its agent, has full control over this whole submission regime until we actually withdraw. So whether there will be a situation where the food status agents in the UK are able to take submissions on the 1st of January next year or not, we don't know at the moment.